because we're all a part of one generation. When you go to the natural, when you go into the, the natural history museum in, uh, in Manhattan, the planetarium, there's a timeline of Earth, and then there's it's a long timeline, and then about the width of a hair is this is where man appeared. Hmm. And the, the, the thought, I think in our country, when, in the 1950s, when we realized that there was some money to exploit puberty, parents' money, yeah. there became the kind of misconception of a generation and a generation gap. Now, that 60th generation did create great change in this country, driven by the youth. And America has had, has had several reform movements, the farmers' movement. There have been movements that are reform movements. That particular movement in the 60s was led by the youth. And the centerpiece of that movement was integration. The centerpiece of rock and roll, ironically, was integration. The Moondog show was about Alan Freed, his shows he brought to him was about integration. People had separated themselves and moved to the suburbs, didn't want to be by. Alan Freed, the disc jockey, was like, no, we're not going to play just white covers of these songs. We're going to play the black songs, and I'm going to put on shows that are integrated. He lost the TV show, American Bands, and uh, the equivalent of American Bands, and because he wouldn't have a non-integrated band. So we see this strain running through our, our history. Now, to add to the confusion, we have segregation by generation. The older people need the younger people, and the younger people need the older people. So we have a joke sometimes at Jazz Lincoln Center, we say we're linked. You're a kid now, you're not gonna be a kid. You're gonna be old. That's what happens, and then you're not gonna be here. That's a fact of life. So when, when, a, lot of, when a lot of stake is put on you because you're young, you say, well, my generation, my generation. <laughs> What's your generation? You're representing something. You're not necessarily your generation. Six people come up with some technological innovation, and it's our generation did that? Most of us don't even know what that is. <laughs> You know, so, and that's true of anything. Beethoven is the German people, or but Beethoven was Beethoven, not the German people. He represents a, a human, a thing in human beings that is timeless. It, it crosses all lines of tribalism. So I find it with younger people and with older people in this country, I see strict segregation. I just see younger people are just an exploitable market for us. And we started providing them with all of these things. Now we've gotten to the point to where we're selling them pornography. And at a certain point, you send them pornography to your kids, 11, 12, 13 years old, how are they gonna survive that? Then it becomes a belief in the generation gap. If you look at pictures of your kids in 19, 12, 13, they don't look like something from another planet. <laughs> They're just young versions of old people. Mm. <laughs> and it, it's like, you know, you start to believe that, so I always tell John, like I've known him since he was a kid, and, and I always loved him. I first met him, he was 13 or 14, he's from Kenner, Louisiana, and you know, it, to see somebody is 28 or 27, the age of my, son, my, my oldest son, out here playing, can play all of this music, can play Monk's music, knows how to play ragtime, understands about music, that's what my father and the musicians wanted. That's what Dizzy and them wanted. And we're all a part of a continuum. That's what George Gershwin wanted. And our continuum is integrated. Our continuum is not segregated. And it's important for us to have our young people be in that line and not get caught in a kind of meaningless, my generation, young people want this and that. People want to do the things that they've always wanted to do. 